Thank you so much for that very warm introduction and welcome and uh, the friendliness of the, of the good people of Wichita has already uh, impressed me so much. So um, I'm very happy uh, to be here. I'm very happy that the uh, members of the media are here to uh, convey this message uh, far and wide uh, to the people in this good diocese. Uh, before I go any further, I, I really uh, believe it's important that, that we pray. And I, so I'd like to invite you to, to pray with me what really is one of my favorite prayers uh, in our Catholic devotion, the Memorare. Uh, and I have a, a, a real uh, good devotion to our Blessed Mother, and, and I'm grateful that uh, Mary, under the title of the Immaculate Conception, is our patroness here in, in Wichita. She was also our patroness under that same title in Springfield in Illinois. So I feel uh, very connected uh, spiritually uh, through her. Uh, and so I just invite us to pray this prayer together. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to thy protection or sought thy help or sought thine intercession was left unaided. Inspired by this confidence, I fly into thee, O Virgin of virgins, my mother. To thee do I come, before thee I stand. O Mother, the Word incarnate, despise not my petitions, but in thy mercy hear and answer me. Amen. Immaculate Heart of Mary, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This morning, dear friends, I'd just like to take a few uh, brief moments to, to make some uh, simple remarks that uh, I've been thinking about over the last uh, 10 days, and uh, these are thoughts and expressions that, that truly come from my heart on this uh, very important day in my life, and I uh, think a very important day in the life of our diocese. The very first thing I want to say is a profound and heartfelt word of gratitude to God for every blessing that I have received from Him. But in a special way today, for the blessing to begin a new ministry in the church, the pastoral office of the Bishop of the Diocese of Wichita. I thank our beloved Pope Francis for the confidence he has shown in me by inviting me to accept this appointment. As I will say many times and with utter sincerity, I was not seeking this appointment and in many ways was surprised by it. Over the years, many have mentioned that in passing, you'll be a bishop someday. And I would always say, that won't happen because God is good. <laughs> well, now I'm gonna to have to rethink that a little bit and <laughs> find a different way of expressing that. You know the old saying, if you want to make God laugh, tell him your plans. My plans after my current uh, work in administration is I made it very clear to the people I worked with in the Diocese of Springfield, including uh, my bishop, Bishop Thomas John Perprocki, was to resume the life of a pastor, which is what I had always thought I was ordained for. But now, seemingly, God has other plans. In all truthfulness, I know many other priests who are much more qualified than I am, more intelligent, more gifted in language skills, administration, and communication. Without a doubt, Pope Francis could have chosen a far more qualified candidate. But in God's mysterious plan, he has chosen me, which is a humbling and sobering experience I receive all of this as a sign of how God often chooses the least qualified, the weak, and the sinful to accomplish his mission in the world. I think of this truth each time I stand at the altar to offer the Mass, echoing in my heart the words that Elizabeth said to Mary at the visitation. How does this happen to me? That is a question I will prayerfully ponder now for the rest of my life. 
Gratitude fills my heart in a very personal way today for my parents, my brothers and my sister, my extended family, my brother priests, and all the many people I came to know and love and serve for these past 53 years of life and for these past 28 years as a priest in the Diocese of Springfield in Illinois. I know that my co-workers uh, at the Chancery in Springfield were planning to participate in this press conference uh, via the internet, and I'm not sure that they are able to do that now, but if they are, I want them to hear very clearly how important they are to me. And I want to express to them and to the many people that I've had the good blessing and privilege of working with of how much they mean to me. Leaving them is a great sadness and sacrifice in my heart, but I know that I take with me the very best of who they are, their love, their support, and their prayers. Gratitude also fills my heart today for you, for our retired bishop, Bishop Gerber, for our diocesan administrator, Monsignor Hemberger, for all the clergy, the many seminarians, the consecrated religious, all in the diocesan staff, and the many lay faithful of the Diocese of Wichita. You are now my new family, and with you, I will make my new home. I've always believed very strongly that bishops are wedded to their diocese. And I want to pledge to you, vow to you, my love, my constant support, the work of my heart, the work of my mind, the work of my hands, my daily prayers, and my pastoral concern as I serve you as the bishop and live among you as a brother in the Lord. I have come to you from rather humble beginnings, a farm boy of central Illinois, a member of a large Catholic family. My parents were hardworking farmers who couldn't give us a lot of things, but they gave us the very best thing, which is faith and participation in the life of the Roman Catholic Church. I grew up in a small little town and with a small little parish church, St. Mary of the Annunciation, and that was like our second home. There, I was baptized. In that very church, I was confirmed and made my first Holy Communion. There, I made my first confession. And there, eventually, after my years of formation, I celebrated my first Mass. I think I'll have to ask on behalf of my parents, especially that my mother, that you would allow me a regular visit back home. Otherwise, I don't think she's going to be very happy about this appointment. <laughs> my mother, when I told her yesterday on the way here that I was appointed to be a Bishop of Wichita, after recovering in her own unique way, she said, oh, I've got to get my hair done now. <laughs> You got a little bit of time, Mom, before now and May 1st. <laughs> I come to you as one who wanted to be a priest from the earliest days of my life. Nothing made me happier and makes me happier than serving in the various parishes to which I was assigned, teaching in the grade schools, hearing confessions, baptizing babies, witnessing marriages, presiding at funerals, all the things that parish priests do. It wasn't always easy, as our pastors and parish priests will tell you, but there was in it all a deep and abiding sense of joy and satisfaction because I was doing what I was convinced God wanted me to do. For that reason, it will be my greatest hope to support our parish priests in these important ministries in our parishes and to call others to join them I don't come to you with any 
advanced theological or canonical degrees other than the ones one would normally receive after the years of formation. I try as best that I, as I can to remain current by reading and study. But my desire was always to have been in the trenches and to help God's people to find God there in their everyday lives. As time unfolds for us together, we will get to know each other, I hope, very well. And I hope very soon that I'll be able to call you by name. I look forward to all that will come from that discovery. For today, it is enough to acknowledge that now we are in this together. Beginning to write the next chapter, a glorious, hope-filled, an exciting chapter in the history of the Diocese of Wichita. And in that, there is great joy, the kind of joy Pope Francis has spoken to us about recently in his apostolic exhortation. It is your joy and mine to follow the Lord, but we do it together as brothers and sisters and to bring others with us along this great journey of faith to help those who are oftentimes left behind in our society, the poor, the vulnerable. And we all do it to find our way to heaven. My friends, the fact that our journeys have now intersected by God's providence and that from now on we will journey together makes me very happy, very happy indeed. Thank you so much.